we would, each Thanksgiving, we would get around the table. <clears throat> My mother would get all the fixings on the table. And then my dad would say, okay, each of you, go, let's go around and say what we're thankful for. Dad, the food's getting cold. I do think, though, that sometime on Thursday, we should reflect on the blessings that God has given us. I don't know about you, but I'm already feeling it. Are you feeling it? We're not going to be long. I will promise you that. And if you feel like you need to leave, that's okay. Aren't you thankful you weren't in the fire? Amen. And yet, we need to be so understanding of those that have been. Uh, I remember, if you've ever talked to Elsie Hove, they went through a fire a number of years ago. I kind of expected them here. Their church is closed um, this morning. That's okay. Maybe they're watching on, on, uh, on Facebook. I wanted to take you to two different psalms this morning. And it's all going to be up on the screen. We're going to start in Psalm 136. Uh, this is a, a responsive reading, so you need to respond. Okay? Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, to the God of gods. And for his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords. For his mercy endures forever. To him who alone does great wonders. By the way, the dot, dot, dot means that that also had for his mercy endures forever. We're skipping it. Just because it gets repetitive. Uh, to him who alone does great wonders. To whom by wisdom, who by wisdom made the heavens. To him who laid out the earth above the waters, to him who made great lights, the sun to rule by day, and the moon, moon and stars to rule by night. For his mercy endures forever. To him who struck Egypt in the firstborn, and brought out Israel from among them with a strong hand and with an outstretched arm. To him who divided the Red Sea in two and made Israel pass through the midst of it, but overthrew Pharaoh and his army. In the Red Sea, to him who led his people through the wilderness. To him who struck down great kings and slew famous kings, Sion, the king of the Amorites, and Og, the king of Bashan, and gave their lands as a heritage, a heritage to Israel, his servant. Who remembered us in our lowly state and rescued us from our enemies, who gave, gives food to all flesh. O oh, give thanks to the God of heaven. This psalm does what we've been doing for the past how many weeks? Did you notice it? When you go back and look at, he, he first talks about the object of thanksgiving, the Lord of Lords. Yahweh, the absolute ruler. When you see Lord and it's all caps like this, where the, the L is a little bigger but the rest is all caps, that's the name Yahweh. It's the name that the, the, the Jewish people stopped saying because they were worried they would take it in vain. And they, they substituted, um, oh, I, the, the other word for Lord, I just lost it for a minute. Adonai. They substituted Adonai. Then he says, oh, give thanks to the God of gods, Elohim of Elohim, the Almighty One. First, the absolute ruler, and then the one who is all-powerful. You know, you can have an absolute ruler, ruler that has no power to do anything. But God is not only absolute ruler, he's the all-powerful one that can do anything he sets his mind to do, that he determines within his will to do. Amen? Amen. We have a God that is able. Could he have stopped the fires? Yes, he could have. Why didn't he? Because that wasn't within his plan and within his will. Do we always understand that? No, we don't. And I want you to remember what the Apostle Paul says. Be careful. The pot should not 
say to the potter, why have you made me thus? When we don't understand the mind of God, doesn't mean we get to criticize God. Amen? Amen. We have to trust. Because his ways are higher than our ways. And it isn't just, well, that was not in God's control. That's a wrong thinking. Nothing is outside of God's control. God is the Almighty. Just remember that. But God has plans that are far bigger than ours, and he has ways that are far beyond our understanding. And so we don't get, we don't have the right to say, why did you do it this way, God? We need to say, instead, God, teach me why. Teach me your ways. Teach me who you are. Help me to understand. It's not wrong to want to understand. It's wrong to question his decision. There's a big difference. Oh, give thanks to the Adonai of Adonai, the master, the Lord, the one who possesses and exercises power and authority to whom, res to whom respect is ascribed. First, then, the object of our thanksgiving should be God and the reasons in who he is. Then he talks about the creator. The first of the great events of the Old Testament is creation, or what we call formation, right? But it's creation. God spoke, and out of nothing, the universe exists. Ex nihilo. He says, to whom by wisdom he made the heavens to him, to, who, to him who laid out the earth above the waters, to him who made great lights, the sun, the moon, and the stars. I always find it fascinating in the scriptures. When it talks about he made the earth, and he made the sun, and the moon, and oh yeah, he made all the stars too. You know how many stars there are? You know how big the universe is? And it's almost for God an afterthought. Oh yeah, I'll make that too. Does that boggle your mind? We, we went to the Creation Museum a number of years ago down in uh, Kentucky. And they have a planetarium thing inside where you can go in and they, they take you out from Earth way out visually with the stars. And you begin to get a, a, a bit of an understanding, although it's really not much of how massive the universe really is. Oh yeah, God made the stars too. And then he begins to recite what he did in delivering his people. The Exodus, Egypt, bringing them out through the Red Sea, destroying Pharaoh's armies in the Red Sea, leading them through 40 years in the wilderness, overcoming the enemies. And God was the deliverer. Remember that Egypt had them boxed in against the Red Sea, and there was nowhere for them to go. And God opened the door through the sea. God let them pass and, and shut the door on top of Pharaoh's armies. He led the people through the wilderness, delivering them from all of his all of the enemies struck down great kings famous kings as a heritage he uh, remembered them he brought judgment we are just getting into some of that the book of the judges and we we started into the united kingdom we're going we're going to wrap things up not next week. I got a really fun announcement I didn't make earlier. You ready? Next week we have a special guest speaker. A special family to this church is coming. Pastor Kevin and Kenyatta Mackey are going to be here. They're actually moving to Colorado in December. So I said, can you please come to Crossroads before you go? And they said, sure. And so we, have we don't have, well, we, we need, 
If you hadn't heard, child number 11 is on the way. So, but we get to enjoy the, the 10 that are here, plus Kevin and Kenyatta. It's and another boy. Is it? Well, of course it's another boy. They got their three girls. God provides. God provided for, for the children of Israel. God has provided a way through the cross for us. And he talks about providing. He ends the, the, the psalm with, Oh, give thanks to the God of heaven. This command. This is what we're to do. Not just on Thanksgiving Day. Amen? But every day. But this week, when we're really focused on this, and people start calling it Turkey Day, it's not about the turkey, right. or the stuffing, or the yams, or it's about the provider. That's right. It's about the protector. And you know, I think for those folks that drove through the fire to escape with their life, they understand that more than anything. They lost everything and in many ways they'll be the most thankful sometimes we get complacent sometimes we forget and we just take for granted what God's given us how much do you deserve you know I hear all the time well they deserved it you know, something good happened. I, I, I have no problem with somebody saying they deserve to go to prison or something if they've done something bad. That they did deserve it. But how much good, how much blessing do we really deserve? The answer is none. The only thing we as human beings deserve is God's judgment because of his wrath and own sin. But we get his blessing because of Jesus Christ. Isn't that wonderful? Mm -hmm. And it should drive us. It should drive us to Thanksgiving. Psalm 100, make a joyful shout to the Lord. Now, this morning, y'all y'all have been quiet. I don't blame you. My throat's raspy, too, already. And I'm, I'm going to wrap up fairly quickly. We're, we're not going to be long. <coughs> Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with thanksgiving. Know that he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. There is a five-fold command I want you to notice. First command is make. Make what? Make a joyful shout to the Lord. We're to vocalize, we're to verbalize, we're to make public our thanksgiving. You know, your voice carries now in today's day and age, far more than it's ever carried before. In years past, if I were to say something, only the immediate people listening could hear me, and it would, could take, even if I were published, it could take years before whatever I said got to other people. This morning, I, I know that friends in Michigan and Indiana and possibly even other parts of the world could be watching on Facebook right now. It doesn't take much to shout anymore. Many of you have social media pages. Facebook is for us old people. But Instagram and Snapchat and Twitter. If you're like our president, he loves to play, right? Are you putting out messages of thankfulness this week? I challenge you. Let people know what you're thankful for. Be a testimony. Make a joyful shout to the Lord. The second command is serve. We're not only to be vo voicing it, but our Deeds should match our words. We need to be serving. It's easy to serve ourselves. 
Thanksgiving, pass more, whatever your favorite thing on the table is, right? <coughs> but are we serving others? One of the reasons we told you about what Anne Marie was doing yesterday at the American Legion, packing up these boxes for the soldiers, is because it's serving others. People you never meet. People you never meet. And they will be so thankful, they'll be making a joyful shout. Amen? Amen. What, Mark Worrell, spending this week, he's away from his family right now, if you didn't know that. In, he, he, Shelly's there in Hawaii decorating for Christmas. <laughs> <coughs> Love you, Shelly. Anyway, he's serving others. It's his life. This guy's been serving others all week. I'm asking how things are going. Oh. Yeah, I was pointing to you, John. <laughs> Appreciate what you do. Serve the Lord. Jesus says, for as much as you do unto the least of these, you do unto me. As you serve others that need, that have needs, you're serving the Lord. Serving the Lord just isn't just about what you do in the church. <coughs> Although you should be serving in the church. You should be using your spiritual gifts. We've talked about that. But are you serving others? And by serving others, serving the Lord. Third, third thing <coughs> is to come before his presence with singing. <clears throat> Many churches today practice a worship style that does not encourage the people to sing. Now, some of you, I, I, I do notice, don't sing much. I encourage you to make a joyful noise. The Bible tells us to come with singing. It should come from in here. And we need to offer that as something before the Lord. And we need to be coming before his presence. And I believe that there is a something very specific about gathering together for worship. When we come, we're contemplating the last two days with as bad as the air was about the possibility that we wouldn't have service this morning. It was, you, you ask my wife, ask my kids, I did not want to, to even contemplate the idea of not having service. If it were as bad as Friday, though, we wouldn't be here this morning. I, I promise you that. But I believe in worshiping together. And I know that there have been places around the world where people have worshiped together under far worse conditions. And sometimes we're just soft Americans. Amen? Amen. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Come before his presence. We're singing. Worship him. Know that he is the Lord. That Yahweh is God. Know that the Almighty is the all-powerful. The, the supreme authority is the one who is able to do. It is he who made us. That's that almighty part, right? He's able and not we ourselves. And then he says, we are the sheep of his pasture. We'll come back to that. Enter is the fourth or fifth command. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. When you come before the Lord, and where do we enter his gates? Well, one, one place is here when we worship, but some place you should be entering far more often is when you are praying. Whether it be driving down the road. By the way, those of you that commute, praying while driving is a great practice. Please keep your eyes open. In that case, we believe in not closing your eyes to pray. Amen. Okay, but Enters, when you pray, are you thankful? Are we, are we praying the Lord of the harvest? Or are we praying the Lord of the hospital? Sometimes all we pray about is physical needs and physical problems. We had three MRIs this week, I believe. Joyce had an MRI done this week on her hand. Kayla had an MRI done. Kyra, uh, Kayla. Kayla is Talitha's friend. And there was one other one, I think. 
Carmel, uh, no, uh, Becky, Becky, thank you, Tim. She, Becky had an MRI. Carmela had, Carmela, so that's four. Carmela had an MRI. And sometimes we get so focused on, he had one too? We're going to buy our own MRI machine. <laughs> sometimes we get so focused on our physical needs, that's all we pray about. Should we be praying about our physical needs? Sure. I don't, want to, I don't want to put the cold water on that. But I'll tell you what. We need to be praying for the, God, the Lord of the harvest. We need to be saying, tell, saying how great he is and coming before his presence with thanksgiving for what he's done. You know, for those of you that have MRIs, you can be thankful you, didn't live you don't live 100 years ago. There was no MRI. Amen? Amen. These, these things we have today... We can be thankful for that he has given us. The motivation that he has given us. We are his sheep. We are his creation. We are his people. We have a special relationship with him. We're not just his creation. We're his people. We're his Sheep sometimes go back to Psalm 23. David speaks as a shepherd about the good shepherd caring for his sheep, protecting and feeding and looking out after, blessing. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Be thankful to him. And bless his name. As we go from this place this morning, we need to go being thankful. Blessing his name. Being thankful you were able to be here this morning. Being thankful that, that we can take a breath. Being thankful that he's given us life, and most importantly, being thankful that he's given us his life. Eternal life. Amen? Amen. Before we close, I, I, I think it's appropriate, and we did this a couple weeks ago, but maybe there's something that you want to just shout to the Lord right now. A thanksgiving that you would like to to uh, make public. I want to give you that opportunity. Uh, I, I'm so thankful to have my family around me. We're going to have mom and dad, I think, they're going to come over on Wednesday. I, I'm, I'm so blessed to, to have my parents and my in-laws still with us. I'm thankful for that. Somebody else. I'm thankful for this church that I can feel comfortable to invite people to anytime I see them. Amen. And invite away, people. <laughs> that God's not dead. Oh, good, Benny. That God is not dead. Good. Anybody else? Somebody God's else? grace. <laughs> God's grace. God's grace. Wretched man that I am. God's grace. Amen. Thank you, Braulio. I don't want to follow that one either. But Try doing it anyway. I was thinking um, a home that we gather in. Oh. And, and how many, running water. How many thousand yes. people lost their homes last night and don't have that anymore? And we have a home. Running hot, hot water. Yeah, amen. Good to take a nice warm shower this morning. No, I want to thank God for the pain and for the joy that we have. For the pain we, we often, and for the joy. We often wow. just thank God for joy, but not for the pain. We never experienced pain, we wouldn't know what it means mm -hmm. to not have it. Amen. 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 Good. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. John. Um, don't want to get too morbid about this, but um, a lot of people ask, like you said, lost everything, but do they have their children with them? Do they have their children? They have not lost everything. Be thankful mm -hmm. for that. And I thank God every day that my children are safe and happy. The stuff in those homes mm -hmm. 
It's just stuff. It's just stuff. You know, I think of my oldest antique that means everything to me. And I would get, gladly throw it into a fire from any member of my family. So true. We need more people affected by it. We do. We need more people affected by it. Thank you, Sabre. Thank you, Alex. I'm thankful for my job to be able to provide for my family so we can have what we have yeah. and give what we can give. I just want to say I'm thankful we are here in this moment right now. We are in California. This is like the, our first. This will be the first time, God willing, this Thursday, that all of us, me, my brothers, and my mom, will all be with our kids to be in their one roof in like mm. 20 years. Coming to your house? At my brother's <laughs> house. I wish it was my house, but he offered. It's okay. so. no, that's good. Praise God. Yeah. Praise God. I'm thankful for each of you. And many of you. I'm thankful for what God, how the God has put you in our lives. Benny. We got two back here. From Daniela, we have thankful for God's power. Oh, great, Daniela. And Thank from you. Chelsea, we have thankful for a church family that's like family, when Amen. family is far away. Amen. Amen. We can be thankful for the technology. Ahead. At one point, if I was looking at it, we could have been reaching out to 20 other people. God is so good. And so often we focus on the bad things and the, the tragedies. And we need to understand that God is so good. There are families still missing loved ones and we need to pray for them. We need to, we need to be thankful for the firefighters, for the people that are going in, going through the, the ash, looking for lost people, looking for the remains. We need to be thankful for them and be praying for them. This week should be a different kind of Thanksgiving for each of us because of what our state is going through right now. I trust that your focus will be on our good God. Father, we thank you that you are Yahweh, the Almighty. That you are Elohim, the all-powerful one. That you love us, that you sent your son to die for us. And that, Father, we can lift up our praise. We can give thanks because of who you are. We ask that as we go from this place, take some time this week with family that we will take time to focus on you the giver of all good gifts the giver of life I pray these things in Jesus name